Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope each and every one of you is having a great day wherever you are. This is like the 10th time I'm recording this because every time I try to record it, somebody interrupts me. But it's okay because I've had lots of practice and this time I'm going to get it right and nobody's going to interrupt me. Keep fingers crossed. Anyway, so as the title suggests, I'm going to offer my opinion as to why I think the inline 6 will begin to replace the V6 just as the V6 replaced the inline 6. Now, this really only is going to apply to rear wheel drive cars or cars where the engine is oriented in that design, and uh, that's really because in a front-wheel drive car it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use an inline-six. If you've ever seen one of those Chrysler minivans from the 90s that has an inline-six front mounted, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The engine basically stretches from fender to fender and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, it's difficult to work on, and that's basically that. But in rear-wheel drive cars, why did the V6 replace the inline six for the majority, and that's basically cost. It was easy to design the V6 after the V8. Now this really isn't the best way to design a V6, but they did it because it saves money. They could just um, use counterweights because a V6 is inherently unbalanced. Uh, it's basically two three cylinders that share a common crank, and if you know how a three cylinder is set up, it's basically you have two cylinders going up and one going down, or vice versa, and this is really not a stable thing, so they use counterweights to um, kind of smooth it out, but this is why BMW never went to a V6 because they just could never get it right. They did have several prototype V6s, but they just never worked out and they continued to stick with the inline six, which was very nice because otherwise I would not have an inline six car. So, and so now there's two reasons that I think the inline six will start to replace the V6 in many applications. And that comes down to two things really, cost savings and downsizing. So. With the downsizing trend, we all know what that is. Smaller displacement motors that are turbocharged that make as much power, if not more, than the larger engines they were replacing that were naturally aspirated. Now, whether you love it or hate this trend, the V8 is going to start to disappear more and more because of this. So um, I I'm kind of disappointed in it, but I'm also happy that we'll get to see more inline sixes, hopefully, if, this, if what I'm predicting holds true. Jaguar and Mercedes have already announced the return of the inline six uh, as soon as this year. So that's really good news from them. Uh, it's probably going to you know, be a few years before I can afford one of those once they start coming down in value, but for now I'm happy with my BMW. So anyway, moving on. So yeah, like I said, it's going to come down to that. So now with cost saving, it's going to play a part. So you, can, you, you could say have a three cylinder, four cylinder, and a V6, but it would make more sense to have an inline six, an inline four, and an inline three and design them all on the same template as BMW does with its B-series motors. And then basically you just add or chop off cylinders depending on which one you want to make. You can use the same design, you can make them on the same assembly line, and that will save you a ton of money. And also it'll be lighter than a V6 because you won't have to use the counterweights which will help you with emissions also. Because a lighter car is not going to need to burn as much fuel to move itself. But anyway, these car manufacturers, they're in it for money. I mean, they don't do it because they want to, you know, whatever, you know, that's why, you know, the 370Z has been the same for the last 10 years. It's why uh, sports cars are getting rarer and rarer, you know, they're, and why SUVs are more and more common. They're trying to make money. It's the same reason Ferrari and Lamborghini are making SUVs. I mean, it's, it's a bit crazy, but they're in it for the money and it's, you know, that's what they got to do to survive. And, you know, if they have to do that, hopefully we can still keep getting good cars as a result of that. But anyway, I'm kind of going off on a tangent anyway. So anyway, that's basically the only reasons right there. And the issue of fitting it is not as big a deal in a rear wheel drive car. I mean, you might have to have a slightly longer hood, but most uh, sporty cars, you know, like BMWs and Alphas and, oh, uh, well, I don't know, um, Mercedes, Jaguar, uh, Infinities, they already have pretty long hoods anyway. So Getting an inline six under there as opposed to a V6 really shouldn't be that much of an issue. I don't think they'll have to rework them very much. And even if they do, they'll probably just implement them when they introduce their new generation of vehicles, which, you know, nowadays happens every four or five years. Anyway, so a quick recap here. I just think that because they'll be able to base them on their fours and threes, so they can just use one design for all engines. And the reason they want to do this in the first place is because they won't have V8s except really in high performance applications. And it just will save them money and also provide a smoother ride. So the first ones to do this and implement inline sixes can claim a smoother ride quality than their V6 competitors. And anyway, that's really all I've got for you today, guys. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. I really think we could start seeing 
more inline sixes. Uh, I'm really hopeful. Maybe it's just me having wishful thinking. But let me know if you think the V6 is still going to reign supreme in the six cylinder department or if the inline six will be making more of a comeback beyond just BMW, Mercedes, and Jaguar. Anyway, guys, have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.